This is the weekly business news in English on TV3. I am Nugzaru Khadze. How do you do? We are doing our best to become the 29th member of the European Union, declared the Georgian Prime Minister in Brussels at the joint press conference with Jose Manuel Barroso, President of the European Commission. Barroso assessed the scheduled signing of the agreement on association of Georgia with European Union as an historic event and investment into the future of our country. To the question regarding the future prospects of Georgia, he answered that making preliminary forecasts was inappropriate and everything depended on the progress which Georgia has still to make. Association agreement? is an investment in the future which will bring real benefits to all parts of the Georgian society. It will transform the economy, open markets, create a better business environment, provide economic means to build a prosperous future for all Georgian citizens. Georgia was a front-runner in establishing a multi-party democracy and promoting market reforms amongst our eastern partners. During our meeting, I have expressed to the Prime Minister the European Commission's support for Georgia's program of key political, judicial and economic reforms. We very much appreciate the strong support of the European Union and its continuous commitment to enhance our cooperation in all domains. Next month, on June 27, we will sign the EU-Georgia Association Agreement, and this agreement will bring our relations to a qualitatively new level. In brief, it is a master plan for Georgia's Europeanization, which will bring many opportunities and benefits for Georgia. Today, we endorse the association agenda as a set of jointly agreed priorities for the period 2014-2016, and that will help prepare Georgia for the successful implementation of the association agreement and the DCFTA. The European Union confirmed its long-time support for Georgia in a financial way, too, within the framework of the program of overall institutional development georgia will additionally receive 19 million euros apart from the tete a tete meeting of barozo and haribashvili members of the georgian delegation met with other european officials the hosts did not give them a firm promise of the surefire membership in the euro union and it was pointed out that the agreement on association was far from being the final point on Georgia's European way. They hinted that Europe has special plans regarding the East European partnership. Anders Fogh Rasmussen, Secretary General of NATO, calls for more warships in the sea, more military aircraft, in the air and more military exercises in place. In the words of Rasmussen, except Georgia and Moldova, the NATO member countries themselves might face the danger on part of Russia. The NATO Secretary General is connecting his words with the event of signing the agreement on association of these two countries with the European Union. And uh, the event is almost here. It is my assessment that we will see the same as uh, Moldova and Georgia uh, are going to finalize uh, these agreements uh, with the European Union. Um, of course, we don't know exactly which instruments the Russians might use, but again, uh, based on previous experience, that might include um, gas prices, uh, gas supply, um, uh, trade uh, uh, restrictions and also attempts to further destabilize uh, the situation in those countries uh, through exploitation of the protracted conflicts in uh, Transnistria, Abkhazia, South Ossetia. Irakliga Alassania, Minister of Defense of Georgia, held negotiations with the NATO member countries. The subject of the negotiations was the possibility of boosting Georgia's defense potential. Alassania did not dwell upon the details of the talks, although he assured that the negotiations were successful. 
Hotel Sheraton Metehi Palace hosted this seminar with the framework of the project that was financed by the European Union in support of Georgian National Agency of Standards and Metrology. The event was targeted to hold the presentation of the progress that was achieved in the process of getting ready for signing the association agreement with the European Union free full-scale trade collaboration. The seminar was dedicated to the International Day of Metrology. Channel 2 of Georgian Public Broadcasting plans to air the programs that will explain the essence of the agreement on association with European Union and the priority of European road for Georgian politics. In order to broadcast the information on Georgia's likely Euro integration for the public at large, Channel 2 of Georgian Public Television will prepare and air the relevant programs in five languages. Recently, the Director of General of Public Broadcasting met with the Councillor to the President in the Office of Presidential Administration to discuss this issue. The programs will be aired by Channel 2 of Public Television three times a week. The broadcasting is scheduled to take off in a few days. The Georgian government has launched a 46 million worth program. The program has the name Produce It in Georgia. It is aimed at promoting the local production. The program was initiated by Prime Minister Irakli Garibashvili. The presentation of the project was held at Expo Georgia, having attracted a lot of attention. Frankly speaking, I look on the state of Israel with admiring envy. Several scores of years ago, it worked a miracle when the country succeeded to consolidate its financial and intellectual resources and its people managed to build one of the powerful states. We can console ourselves with the fact that we have potent intellectual resources as well as adequate financial assets. The Prime Minister appealed to the business sector to participate in the development of local production and assist the governmental program. He reminded the Georgian businessmen that they are the integral part of the country. This country belongs not only to the government or the parliament, the Prime Minister or the President. This is our mutual state, and for that reason, all of us must look after it. Therefore, it is very important to participate in this project. While the Prime Minister looked on Israel with admiring envy, the Minister of Economy said he envied those businessmen who would take part in the governmental program. I envy those businessmen who will decide to set up new enterprises within the framework of this program, since it is a matchlessly favorable and business conducive project. The project will be realized through the assistance of the banking sector. This implies that the government will help the businessmen obtain beneficial credits for building new enterprises. As a matter of financial support, the government will cover 10% of credit interest. This means that if the entrepreneur gets a 13% credit, the government will pay 10% and the entrepreneur will pay only 3%. Risks used to be high and they remain high even now. Those institutions were overcautious in their investment activities. Therefore, the government arrived at the decision to get involved in the spheres where the private sector is less active. The program produced in Georgia envisages granting of credits to the enterprises that intend to function in industrial and agricultural spheres. The project implies accessibility of finances, purchase of real estate for a symbolic price of one lari and providing for consulting services.
Premier Irakli Garibashvili met with Korean investors. Korean Corporation of Water Resources intends to make investments in Georgia. The corporation is interested in the Nenskra Hydro Station, which will be built in Svaneti. Annual output of 210 megawatt capacity Nenskra Hydroelectric Station will amount to 1.3 billion kilowatt hours. After they start up, the hydroelectric station will supply the Georgian market with guaranteed permanency in autumn and winter seasons, while in summer it will provide for maximum volume of exportable electricity. A consultant of the project is the World Bank. Its estimated investment cost is $760 million. On the 21st of May, Courtyard Marriott Hotel in Belize hosted an international conference dedicated to the cooperative movement. The conference worked under the title of the Prospects of Development of Cooperatives and it was organized by the Georgian Union of Cooperatives called Iberia. Incidentally, the Iberia Cooperative Union of Georgia is the active member of the International Cooperative Alliance. Within the framework of the event, its participants discuss the issues of Georgian agricultural potential and collaboration with their partners in the sphere. The leader of the Georgian cooperative movement, Roin Adamadze, is very optimistic about the helpfulness of resuscitating Georgia's old cooperative contacts. After the 25-year-long recess, we invited the chairman of cooperatives of former Soviet Union. We intend to revive our old links. We will help them, and in return, they will help us in realizing our products. Setting up of the new cooperation aims to enhance the economic situation of Georgia and develop Georgian agriculture. As a matter of fact, this might be one of the most useful directions of our national economy. The conference was attended by a number of foreign guests, including Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, Moldova, Kazakhstan, and Tajikistan. At Expo Georgia, the Georgian exhibition complex, the German Economic Association organized an exhibition named Expo Germany. About 70 German companies that are doing business in Georgia and South Caucasus presented their pr products and services according to the organizers of the exhibition. Expo Germany offers the opportunity to Georgian companies and Georgian businessmen to establish new contacts with Germany and enhance the existing economic relations. A new mitochondrial DNA laboratory was opened at National Bureau of Legal Expertise, named after Levan Samharaouli. The new laboratory enables the medical experts to perform uh, identification of a person on the basis of old and degraded material. The DNA laboratory is actively engaged in the process of identification of Georgian soldiers who have perished at Babushera and Gumista. Members of the Cabinet of Ministers attended the ceremony of inauguration of the laboratory. Georgia may become one of the composite parts of Google Voice system thanks to the invention of Irakli Kardava, a young scientist, doctoral candidate of the Sohumi State University. Our correspondent, Kote Mosidze, has talked with the inventor. Thanks to the invention of a Georgian cyber scientist will be able to type a text in computer by means of Georgian language. Until now, you could type text in computer by talking only in such languages as English, Chinese and Japanese. Thanks to the program created by Irakli Kardava, Virtual Georgia can become the part of the 
Google Voice. In the near future, you won't need either a mouse or a keypad. You will type a text in your computer by using the sound of your voice. At present, the program is at the stage of build-up. It comprises about 1,000 words, and we increase their number every day. In order to turn the geo-speech recognizer into a perfect tool, we need to integrate voices of almost 200 persons into this program. Together with loading the text in the computer, the voice recognizer will be able to fulfill the orders pronounced by the user. The speech recognizer will be very useful for the people of such profession as journalists. If the program is brought to perfection, it can be used in smartphones as well. At the same time, Geo Speech Recognizer will induce the users to speak correctly. In order to control the computer via voice, you should use grammatically correct forms of your native language. In case you pronounce incorrect form of a word, the program will offer you several forms to choose the fitting one. Very soon, Georgian speech recognizer will be integrated into the Google. This will take even the comp dummies closer to the cyber world. Thanks to the program created by Irakli Kardava, the virtual Georgia can become part of the Google Voice system. In the nearest future, you will not need either a mouse or a keypad. You will type a text in your computer by using the sound of your voice. Noisy disputes continue about the Sardrisi gold mine. Members of the committee for saving the Sardrisi mine addressed a letter to Guram Odisharia, Minister of Culture of Georgia. During the briefing, Organized by the members of the committee in the lobby of the Ministry of Culture, the authors of the letter declared that in their appeal they request to restore the status of the monument of cultural heritage of Sardrisi gold mine. According to Irakli Mamaladze, member of the committee for saving the Sardrisi mine, two foreign experts invited by the Ministry of Culture and RMG Gold produced the conclusion which plainly states that Sardrisi is an ancient mine. The status of Sardrisi should be restored, since actually everybody agrees that it is a real historical monument of our cultural heritage. This fact was confirmed by the foreign experts who were invited by the Ministry of Culture and RNG Gold themselves. We demand to make the people who have concocted fake documents answer for their crime. About 40 persons have signed the letter addressed to the Minister of Culture, Guram Odisharia. The Larsi checkpoint at the Georgian-Russian border is closed. Russian citizens who want to return to Vladikavkaz are gathered in the zone of natural catastrophe. The Georgian side has advised them to look for an alternate way of crossing the border because the automobile road cannot be restored until it is cleared of debris. Movement of uh, traffic in the direction of the Georgian-Russian border is still hampered. Landslide in the Dariali Gorge occurred a week ago. Rock slide has engulfed several automobiles and caused flooding of the Terek River. Company Energo Pro Georgia mounted a sound signal in the Gvelete village of the Dariali Gorge. It gets activated before the expected danger. According to David Kikalishvili, manager of the Hasbegi service center of the company, the coverage zone of the signal equals 1,000 meters. The employee on duty guards the place. He is ready to turn on the sound signal in case of danger. The manager of the Hasbegi service center said, according to the company's information, if during the road clearance works, a new danger of landslide appears, the employees at work will be alerted by the sound signal. A website named Partiebi GE has been restored. 
Thanks to the website, the user can get acquainted with this or that nominated for participating in the election party, as well as with their concepts, and compare them with one another. The availability of website is very important because it allows the constituents to have an idea for whom they vote and who they are voting for this or that candidate. This site offers the viewpoints of representatives of various political parties regarding the problems of different cities, towns and regions and means of their solution. Users can visit Georgian, English, Armenian and Azeri versions of website partiebi.ge. The project is financed by the Embassy of the Kingdom of Netherlands. Tbilisi will be hosting the European Youth Olympic Festival of 2015. But earlier than that, something else is coming up this summer. Jean Grazia, first vice president of European Association of Athletics, and Robert Emian, president of Armenian Federation of Athletics, met with Alexei Akhlediani, president of Georgian Athletics Federation and chairman of the organizing committee of the 2015 Youth Olympic Games. They discussed the organizational and logistical issues connected with the Tbilisi 2014, the European Youth Championship in athletics, although of the third league only. The championship will be held in Tbilisi between June 21 and 22 of the current year. About 700 athletes from 15 countries are supposed to take part in the event. The negotiators also touched upon the planned preparations for upcoming European Youth Athletics Championship, Tbilisi 2016. Well, this was the weekly business news in English on Channel 3 of the Georgian Television. Thank you very much for watching. I am Nukzar Ruhadze. I'll see you again next Saturday morning at exactly 11 a.m. right here on TV3. Until then, have a great week.